This is Jeff Weiss with Unit 5 of HRT 211. This unit will cover the basics of seed development. And for this week, uh, your readings are in Chapter 4 of the text. Um, this lecture and the associated PowerPoint are available on Enter, as are some uh, videos that animate uh, fertilization and, and illustrate the interesting phenomenon of double fertilization in angiosperms. Uh, we have a discussion question this week about uh, the anatomy of um, angiosperms, how flower organs convert to parts of the seed, and there is a dissection assignment for uh, the online students for this class. For the um, students that meet in my lab, uh, we will be doing this in the Unit 6 lab. Key terms and concepts this week all have to do with the both the um, anatomy and physiology of flowers, fruit, and seed. Your learning objectives for this week are to be able to describe the relationship between plant organs as they, as they develop from flower to fruit to seed, to explain the critical processes of pollination and fertilization and how they occur in plants. Uh, to describe the stages of seed development and to um, know a little bit about how hormones uh, um, facilitate seed development and ripening. So what is a seed? Back to basics. A, a seed is a matured ovule. An ovule is a flower part and as that uh, flower uh, matures into a fruit and then into a, uh, uh, a number of seeds. Uh, that ovule consists of an embryo, uh, storage tissue that provides uh, food for the uh, uh, young plant as it develops, and an outer covering uh, called a testa, which is uh, critical to uh, the um, dormancy of some seeds and the protection of the seed from both uh, 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 damage uh, and uh, uh, premature uh, 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 germination. So this uh, process of converting from a flower to fruit to seed is illustrated by this lima bean. Uh, the uh, flower is a uh, quite a typical uh, legume flower. Uh, the the f um, fruit of the lima bean is the pod that's illustrated here, and the seeds obviously are um, the beans that we eat. Uh, so seeds are a critical part of the food supply for uh, both humans and animals uh, uh, around the world, and uh, the ability to um, propagate plants, uh, both crops and uh, native uh, plants, including trees, shrubs, uh, grasses, and forbs out in our uh, natural areas is uh, critical important to both the uh, diet and the uh, environmental health of our planet. So this illustration shows uh, the uh, some of the one-to-one -one correspondence between what's happening inside the uh, flower of an angiosperm and uh, the uh, eventual production of fruit and seeds from that flower. Uh, so the ovary, uh, this uh, uh, entire structure that's illustrated here, uh, is the uh, what becomes the fruit. Uh, the ovule uh, inside the ovary becomes the seed. The embryo sac uh, becomes the inner seed, the polar nuclei, which we'll talk about in uh, uh, when we get to double fertilization, becomes the endosperm. Uh, the egg cell uh, is the uh, embryo itself, and the integuments uh, for many types of seeds becomes the seed coat. Now, the the these structures do vary somewhat between uh, uh, different types of uh, of angiosperms, but uh, in general this is the, uh, uh, the the way that these structures develop and grow. 
So a critical process uh, that um, initiates the, uh, the development of seeds is pollination, where the um, pollen grains that are produced uh, in the male parts and displayed on the anther of flowers um, are um, carried by wind or um, pollinators such as uh, bees, birds, bats, etc. Uh, from that male part to the female part. Uh, in other words, the stigma, uh, the uh, sticky end of the ovary. And once that pollen is, pollination has occurred, the stage is set for fertilization. And last week we talked about uh, a number of chromosomes and the uh, uh, process of meiosis where the 2n or diploid number of chromosomes is divided in half and the uh, plant becomes uh, or the uh, cell becomes a 1n or haploid uh, sex uh, cell either uh, a spore for a uh, the male part or a um, uh, a zygote for the female part and that uh, uh, fertilization then occurs inside the ovule uh, where a, uh, the uh, two sex cells unite and become a diploid cell and the stage is set then for the development of the um, um, embryo into a new plant. This is a wonderful chart by the way so I urge you to uh, spend a little time uh, and it gives you a, a, a very nice overview between the processes of um, the development of all of the uh, uh, parts of the plant, the uh, interaction between the processes of meiosis and mitosis, and then um, what happens inside the ovule to uh, initiate and develop, uh, begin the development of seeds. So this fertilization again is the fusion of a haploid male cell with a um, haploid female cell to produce the um, uh, diploid zygote. And I think I misspoke earlier, um, but the zygote is the product of fertilization and it has the, uh, the diploid number of chromosomes and marks the beginning of a new plant. So this is, I thought, an interesting photo that shows um, uh, flowers of the mulberry tree during fertilization and you can note that the uh, uh, pollen receptors uh, quickly um, wilt once um, fertilization has taken place while the other uh, flowers are waiting their turn to be fertilized and are still um, uh, showing their uh, uh, their receptivity to, to uh, grains of pollen that will start the fertilization process. Now there's a great um, video that walks through and illustrates the process of double fertilization, uh, but in uh, the case of angiosperms there is a second uh, haploid male cell uh, that is carried down the uh, pollen tube and uh, fertilizes uh, a uh, haploid uh, female cell. Um, sorry, fertilizes a diploid female cell and uh, becomes a triploid storage tissue called the endosperm. For most uh, plants this endosperm is the, uh, the primary um, food storage area within the, uh, uh, within the seed and uh, is a very significant uh, source of food and nourishment for the embryo following germination. So as the seed begins to develop um, the um, process of mitosis results in um, uh, both increase in the number of uh, cells in the new seedling and also uh, begins to the process of specialization of the uh, parts of the seed. And already in these very early stages of development for corn and uh, uh, dicot seeds, this could be a bean or some other uh, type of seed, um, the um, 
uh, quickly dividing cells already begin to show the uh, stages that will uh, become the uh, important parts of the plant. So in the case of, uh, of both uh, monocots and dicots, the radical becomes the, uh, the, the root of the plant and the cotyledons, two of them already in this dicot, uh, become the, uh, the uh, seed leaves of the, of the plant. In the case of the um, corn or the monocot, there's a, uh, a stage where the coleoptile uh, forms and becomes the eventual um, uh, single um, uh, cotyledon and the eventual embryo for the, for the seed. So some further illustrations of uh, development of a, a seed into a seedling. Uh, this one's illustrated by uh, dogwood, and the radical now has um, uh, extended into the soil and uh, formed uh, rootlets and uh, uh, root hairs. And the epicotyl has become the shoot for that seedling, and uh, you can see progressively how the, uh, the seed leaves, the cotyledons, uh, give way to the uh, true leaves of the plant as it develops. Following the seedling stage, the uh, plant, uh, over the course of its uh, growing season or its life cycle, develops uh, into uh, uh, flowers and uh, those flowers uh, develop seeds and uh, those seeds um, over uh, time develop their uh, uh, derive significant energy from the plant and uh, take on storage of uh, carbohydrates, fats, oils, proteins uh, and we uh, looked at the uh, various types of materials that were being stored uh, when we did the uh, uh, seed staining testing on corn and beans and uh, the composition of the stored materials vary significantly between plants. But at the end of the uh, process of, of uh, flowering and fruit formation, all of the um, materials needed by that plant to um, uh, grow from the uh, seed are stored uh, in that seed. Um, all of the DNA uh, uh, required to uh, for um, reproduction and replication, uh, the RNA and proteins uh, required for uh, 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 all of the plant processes are there uh, waiting to be unlocked through the process of uh, germination and development. Um, and as the uh, seeds um, uh, develop, once they are fully developed, um, uh, there's a critical uh, third stage of um, maturation drying. And seeds uh, need to go through this drying process in order to uh, um, uh, retain their viability for time. Some seeds uh, remain viable uh, in the soil for uh, many years. Others can be uh, stored under favorable conditions and, and uh, maintain their viability for um, centuries. But uh, for most seeds, uh, they, they uh, need to be dried so that the internal uh, moisture is somewhere in the area of 3 to 10 percent and that uh, uh, maturation drying allows them to resist rotting to prevent premature ger germination and to remain viable in long-term storage. So there's a couple of types of unusual seed development. First of all, and, and they're important for horticulture, uh, the first one is ap apomixis, which is uh, where um, seeds are formed bypassing the normal sexual um, um, fertilization process that was described earlier. And this is a uh, important uh, process for some uh, of our crop plants, especially uh, citrus fruits such as oranges and other fruits such as mangoes. And the significance of apomixis is that uh, seeds that uh, uh, come out of this process have identical genetics. 
Um, they are uh, identical to the parent plants and produce uh, consistent uh, 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 um, traits for the trees and the um, and the fruit that that um, are used for for food and they are also important for producing virus free plants so uh, this important uh, uh, element of fruit production is the use of apomit excuse me apomitic seeds another uh, important uh, uh, trait of uh, some plants uh, that is used for horticultural purposes is parthenocarpy and that is production of seedless fruit. Uh, we see this here in watermelons and uh, uh, grapes. Seedless grapes have uh, uh, come to dominate uh, um, uh, uh, at our grocery stores and um, our uh, bananas uh, are, are bred to be uh, seedless. Now the illustration below indicates uh, what a banana would look like if it was not seedless. Uh, it would be loaded with these hard seeds and basically be inedible. Uh, so uh, the um, parthenocarpic uh, fruit is a um, important part of our diet and uh, what the implications for horticulture are that is that um, uh, this type of uh, plant needs to be propagated asexually. Obviously if there's no seeds being produced uh, it needs to be propagated through some other uh, method, grafting or cuttings or uh, some other method. And um, the big problem in the um, uh, is um, with this is that uh, plants such as bananas uh, that are entirely propagated asexually and all have the identical ge genetic traits are very prone to uh, infection and in many parts of the world the banana crops are being destroyed by a fungus and uh, it's likely that sometime in the future that we're going to need to develop a uh, uh, a new uh, form of banana because the current one that's used throughout the world is dying off uh, in many places due to this fungal attack So um, hormones are an important part of uh, seed development and the four main classes of hormones that are covered in this course are gibberellins which are uh, active early in seed development and uh, along with parthenocarpy they can be used to induce seedlessness so there can be two factors uh, responsible for seedless fruit one is the uh, uh, the genetic makeup uh, but in, uh, gibberellins can also uh, be applied to certain fruit to uh, induce seedlessness. Cytokinins uh, control the cell division in, um, in, uh, as uh, seeds develop. Abscisic acid uh, is uh, important in developing the storage proteins and in um, inhibiting germination. And finally, ethylene doesn't seem to be very important for uh, seed development, um, but it is uh, very important for fruit ripening. So the um, uh, common banana is harvested green uh, in Central America, uh, shipped and um, received in the um, warehouse for the grocery store, and when it's time to um, to uh, sell the bananas they're sprayed with ethylene gas which rapidly um, induces uh, uh, ripening and then finally abscisic acid um, is the hormone that controls the end of seed development uh, during maturation drying um, uh, and preventing premature germination so um, uh, the, this uh, uh, germination and dormancy of seeds, uh, this characteristic has been bred out of most of our crop plants so that when we plant our seeds in spring we really don't have to worry about uh, uh, doing anything to break dormancy of these plants 
and they've also been bred to be very consistent in their um, in their germination period and this makes uh, uh, our crop plants um, uh, very reliable in terms of the percent of germination and in the consistency of the plant size as the seeds germinate and the seedlings grow um, uh, but this has been a result of, of breeding whereas uh, the uh, dormancy period and in some cases the stubborn resistance to germination uh, is critical for our wild plants and our native plants uh, and and this trait uh, will and and the important the uh, genetic and evolutionary importance of this will be discussed in a later lesson So one other aspect of uh, seeds uh, and uh, classification of seed types is uh, between orthodox seeds. These are seeds that can be, once uh, maturation drying has occurred, uh, these uh, seeds can be maintained in cold storage for an extended period, as I suggested earlier, perhaps years or decades. Um, contrast that with recalcitrant seeds. Um, here's a coconut, but um, most uh, seeds that are formed uh, as nuts, uh, acorns, uh, walnuts, uh, uh, other large um, seeds, um, lose viability. So they can only be stored for a limited period of time, if at all. And after that limited period of time, they lose their viability and are no longer uh, able to be uh, germinated. So this is a, a critical uh, consideration for uh, seed savers uh, and also for uh, uh, native plant uh, propagators or um, seed banks uh, where these uh, seeds are, uh, are stored and recalcitrant uh, plants are not really subject to seed banking uh, or storage over time. So that brings us to the discussion question for this week. I'd like you to go back uh, to your anatomy and uh, choose one flower structure and describe how it develops into a seed part. And over the class, I'd like you to look at the prior students' uh, posts and try to minimize the number of uh, duplications and try to add new information on uh, um, how uh, flowers develop into fruit and seeds. And in your reply, pr please provide uh, uh, a reason why the relationship between flower and seed might be useful information. In other words, I'd like you to think about the application for horticultural purposes of this uh, anatomy and physiology information we've been describing up until now in this lesson. Now, um, for my students with a lab, um, we're going to do this uh, dissection in uh, the Unit 6 uh, uh, lab uh, for the pure online students. Um, I'm uh, offering this uh, dissection assignment and a video that I prepared with some ideas about how to do it.